What is up guys, it is Zach Cloche. And in today's video, I'm going to attempt to make setting up a front end framework like React, Vue, or uh, Angular, or any of the other existing ones today with a simple Django backend. Uh, now, the reason I'm doing this is because there can typically be confusion on how to just build this and architect this sort of a structure in general. And a lot of people try to put everything all in one folder. So both the Django backend and the front end framework uh, which are supposed to represent two different parts of a application, typically. So let me show you what I mean. The first thing I'm going to do is create a folder. So I'm just going to call this, as an example, portfolio uh, site. We're going to open this in VS Code. And in here, I'm going to run two commands. So once we get terminal open and uh, yeah, as we can see, that started in PowerShell, which is not a good thing. So we're just going to go here, delete this PowerShell version, and only work in command line. So what we can do here is typically people will say Django admin start project, get all of their project code inside of a folder. So now we have our Django code right here, with config and manage.py. And also, they'll create their front end, uh, essentially, directory right inside of their Django project itself. So they're like, this is a Django project. And I was doing the same thing. Yarn create Vite um, front end, or uh, let's call it portfolio front end with a template of view right in this same directory. And once that's done, it becomes a question of, OK, how do I connect my front end to my Django back end? which is Django is typically where you're going, going to have your models. So um, it's not the most convenient because you might have to change like your package uh, or not package.json, but essentially there's a build process that people have been using to essentially use Django to serve their the static part of their website. Now, um, the reason that this might be confusing is because one, that's what I've seen a lot of people show how to do. Um, but also, um, it can be a bit challenging because you're kind of forcing Django to do something that it wasn't necessarily built to do because you're essentially shoving all of your static files or all of your uh, front end code into your static files for Django, which just it doesn't make a lot of sense. And it can be pretty hard to configure because you have to do a bunch of crazy settings in this part of your project or in your front end code in order to get that to work. Uh, and um, typically, your front end doesn't have to directly connect to Django itself. All it needs is to use Axios or the Fetch API built into JavaScript to fetch data from the web and pull that data onto your web pages. So, yeah, so typically all you need to access is the API. Um, but it can be, uh, as I've talked about already, it can be a bit of a hassle. Now, um, to make this easier, you might want to consider doing the following. So I'm going to create another folder inside of here and call this, we're going to call this uh, portfolio backend. So move in manage.py, move in config. And now we have both the front end of our project and the back end like so. Now, why would you want to do this? Because now the front end and the back end of your project are equally decoupled. So what this allows us to do is say you want to have some front end people work on your project. Let's say they only know all the web technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and they know these really, really well. Um, and also, say you have, um, say they need to, they want to make like changes to the back end or something, um, but they don't really know Python. So it's not really like a huge win-win situation if they have to like waste time, waste extra time learning how to set up things like virtual environments, uh, like running the Python manage.py run server command in order to get Django working. And, um, and essentially all the other build commands that Django has on its site. Uh, so if you want to keep these things separate, you 100% can. And that is done by each of them having their own directory. Uh, so portfolio front end, their own, and portfolio back end. Each of them having their own Git repository, as well as their own servers. 
the reason why is because your front end code is just static code. It doesn't need to directly access a database because it's not like uh, uh, typically you're not using like PHP or something to start to serve the files. You're using JavaScript to dynamically get all of that data. So it is a split process that doesn't need to be connected anymore. So you can push up your uh, your Django project up to like Heroku or something that's pretty easy to get there, use that database, and then you can have the backend developers working specifically on Django. Um, and all you all they need to do is work with the front end people to make sure that the APIs are serving the right data in the right way. So making sure all the variable names match. And um, if they need to make a change to the back end, they can make those changes safely without changing or necessarily impacting the front end code. Um, and the same with the front end people. They can update they can update the design on their own so they can get push and manage all of that front end part um, on their own. And it can be completely separate from the back end. So they don't have to wait from anything from some other developer uh, from some other developer in order to make a push to that Git repository or to the server in order for those changes to go live or to be managed uh, in a way that's a lot easier. Um, so that is the general uh, architecture that you might want to think about and um, using these. So if you've seen my Django video, you'll know that it's it can be relatively easy with her, uh, to set up a project on Heroku as long as you have the right process. Um, and uh, this architecture does also require Django being able to have an API. Uh, so that's where Django REST framework would come in. Um, and also, uh, the front end, you can put on something like Netlify, which is literally one of the easiest things in the world to do. And the same with um, GitHub Pages. It could also be served there as well because it's just a static, uh, a static site um, server. So you don't have to do a bunch of crazy configuration to get your project into Django um, or to get your project working with the Django backend. Um, and I was one of the people who was like, okay, I want everything to be on Django. It's a Django project. It's one project. Why does it need two folders? Um, and the reason is it becomes a lot easier to manage, weirdly enough. And I was extremely against this at first, but uh, <laughs> after uh, my uh, my ment one of my mentors explained this to me, um, it was pretty, it made a lot of sense because once everything is separated, like they're not completely separated, but if you needed to change your backend to something like, uh, I don't know. Okay, honestly, I don't know other backends right now. I mostly know Django and Python, but <laughs> assuming you do have some other backend in mind, um, you could change the backend technology completely to something else, something beyond Django, like, I don't know, Express or whatever other backends there are. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure in that yet, but but um, yeah, and you could also change your front end completely, like um, because all you're doing is just accessing the API with different, uh, well, yeah, with JavaScript. So if you need, you can change it to React, you can change it to whatever. The front end will still work if you change the back end. The back end will still work as long as all of the data is still matching together. Uh, so yeah, that is my short attempt on explaining this whole process and just showing you the general architecture of how to think about setting up your projects. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you want to know like more about Netlify or Heroku or whatever, um, yeah, you can reach out to me there or on my code mentor profile. Both of those are valid options. So yeah, or just any more questions about that build process in general, I would love to answer those. Uh, so Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it was above all helpful for you to think about how to set this up. And um, yep, thank you for watching. If you like the content, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And that's it. So bye for now.